Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Today I'm here with Dr. Paul Druin. He's the president of Quantum University. And Dr. Paul, thanks so much for having me this week. I actually knew about you for a couple of years before you contacted me online and asked me to come to the conference. And just being here talking with you and learning from you has just been so much fun and I just want to thank you for that. Thank you uh, and thank you yourself to be here because uh, you bring such an expertise and experience uh, and, and you bring this kind of bridge between science, psychiatry and the field of uh, wellness and, uh, yeah. and quantum medicine if we can see. I think that that really came out of me just being really interested in technology and the different technology that we have to show things that are happening in the physical world and I think that as technology progresses, we're going to see more and more of these things. The measurements of the brain, the measurements of, of particles, all these th different things are teaching us so much and bridging that between you know, traditional integrative medicine and allopathic medicine and bringing those, those worlds together, I think is just so important. It's very important. Then we were speaking a little bit about this before, you know, how to bring uh, the field of integrative quantum medicine to the field of uh, traditional medicine. And, uh, bio neurofeedback is certainly a window. So yeah. who is not interested in the mind? Who is not interested, uh, you know, to this neuroplasticity and, and how to uh, modify behavior, improve health, you know, on the base of this uh, training? It's almost like a window into developing the mind for people. Now, how do you see this moving forward and how it will benefit integrative medicine going further? Yeah, there, there is in integrative medicine this concept of a connection mind and body. And, and uh, if we look at what uh, the we uh, conventional medicine was uh, exploring or describing this connection, it says for years they have made like uh, them apart, you know, this kind of Cartesian medicine where the mind is here and the body is there. Then came along this uh, last uh, decade, uh, many uh, researchers speaking about consciousness and the integration of mind and body and uh, that has been a challenge in some way for medicine for centuries you know how to blend both together and now there is kind of a way to integrate the mind and body to this field of information but how we convince now people that come from a, a more uh, western medicine and neurofeedback and biofeedback especially neurofeedback I think will be uh, this uh, scientific ground because now we can in some way measure, quantify uh, the, the brain activity. Yeah. If I look at other that have explored this field, one like Joe Dispenza, you mm -hmm. know, you go in his workshop and he will, uh, by example, use the, the brain mapping during his experiment and discover, you know, when they are experiencing different altered state of consciousness, the brain map is uh, uh, shaping and showing <laughs> this uh, transformation. Yeah. So neurofeedback is a ground where we can reconciliate concepts that in the past were kind of a AJ or we cannot grasp and not bringing them in the field of, of conventional medicine. Yeah, it's um, just being able to demonstrate how much power the mind has over the body. I mean, in your presentation yesterday, you were talking about heart rate variability and how it is manifesting its control over the entire autonomic system, right? It's For me, there is like two main subjects now. Of course, there is more than that. If we can look at nutrition and pain management, but the one we were speaking yesterday in two days, what we call heart and brain coherence. Just to think about what will be the repercussion to, mm -hmm. to train people in these two fields. We speak about heart coherence, it's using the, the heart variability that has now so much scientific data to be back up. And, and just uh, introducing in the field of healthcare, doctor that I call pro-consciousness, doctor people that are aware of, of mm -hmm. the impact of this physiology. We can now train population, we can train you know, a court of people that can change the outcome of their physiology and, and the future, the fact that you know, they will not have that much coronary disease, they will be less stressed. They can also resolve, you know, mental and mm -hmm. psychological situation just mastering the heart variability. And what about now the brain? The same thing, you know. We know meditation is is probably uh, the less expensive panacea that can exist. Yeah. You have thousands of research now backing up the fact that you meditate and uh, it's an anti-aging, and then you have less. Uh, 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 cardiovascular disease and less cancer and less anxiety and depression and so on. This is uh, 
you know, uh, incredible. So why are we not paying more attention to the fact that when someone go to see the doctor, that he can be trained in, in managing and creating more coherence at the heart and, and the brain level? Yeah. And we have seen this in this workshop. You know, these is, can be teach in, in a weekend. Right. And, and these modality can be implemented. I can see this in the healthcare in the future where you have a doctor, you know, conventional, of course, dealing with, you know, disease and physical situation. Mm -hmm. But you will have also what we call, this is what I call pro-consciousness doctor or wellness doctor yeah. who will be kind of a coach, mm -hmm. training people and changing this balance where the client is not waiting to be diagnosed with something bad. It is just trained to prevent all these conditions. And, and this is where we are now, healthcare. Yeah. If we don't add this ingredient in the healthcare, right. well, I don't think we can solve this crisis of uh, healthcare now. I think I see that attitude mm. even um, play itself out in meditation teaching um, that I've been trying to do the last couple of years because it's almost like people are of the mentality that if I get stressed, oh, I'll just meditate and that'll lower my stress level. And they don't understand that it's actually the day-to-day -day practice that actually prevents them to get into the stress level in the first place. So I feel like that is, um, rather than you know, taking a reactive approach to medicine before things get really bad, you're more proactive about it, as you said, like with more of a wellness coach. And I think that transitions pretty well into one of the themes that we've had this, this weekend, which is the democratization of medicine, right? So important. There is many route with how we can uh, develop the neurobiofeedback. You know, we can develop the neurofeedback more kind of a mod medical model. And I think this is important because still, you know, we will have people consulting uh, neurofeedback practitioners, psychiatrists or doctors because they have specific condition, ADD, autism, you know, and, and they can address these medical issue uh, with uh, more sophisticated equipment. But again, how, how much we can handle people, quantity of people like this, it's very mm -hmm. expensive. There's another way to look at neuro and biofeedback where technology now will be available in the hands of clients. And this is right. where the smartphone technology, digital technology come in. And uh, does this smartphone has changed our lives in, in the last 20 years? Right. And I think the same thing will happen now in, in, the, in the medical field where these practitioner will be working in tandem with the client having this smartphone technology where at home he can practice heart variability, where at home he can uh, create a better uh, brain coherence through meditation or other exercise. Mm -hmm. And then the, the practitioner monitoring these clients, you know, now we, we have software available that where he can monitor how the meditation is going and how the heart variability is going. So this is another way to democratizing in a sense that we're empowering the client yeah. you know with information that you know i remember in medicine 40 years ago we didn't have you know? yeah yeah we, we had like we took blood pressure and you know listen uh, uh, this uh, with the heart with the st stethoscope now you know the client has access to his brain coherence his yeah. heart and uh, uh, hundreds of other parameters you know how much calorie how is your sleep and how is your uh, and so on. Democratization is about creating a new balance in healthcare where the responsibility of health is not just on the system, you right. know, on the yeah. doctor <coughs> that is there and you expect everything, but the, the, the truth is that will not happen. It didn't happen, it will not happen. And you were talking about earlier how it simply just has become unsustainable at this point for an economy to even manage, right? Absolutely, <coughs> yeah. Come from Canada, we have universal healthcare, come here, you know, we're debating this now. <coughs> but, but these aren't the crux of the problem. The, the crux no, of the problem No, the, the crux is, the problem is how we practice medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the question who pay the bills because yeah. nobody can pay <laughs> the bills anymore. Right. The question is how we change our way to look at the individual. And pro-consciousness medicine is about to look at the individual, the client that walk in the office, not in terms of, you know, what's wrong with this guy, but what is the potential there? And what is that I can be doing that will enhance, you know, the potential of that individual? Creating more awareness, using biofeedback. This is what is bio neurofeedback. It's creating, a, you know, a feedback of information yeah. so where you become more aware. It, this will be a game changer. This is yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think as um, <coughs> this was mentioned in one of the quantum university videos, but as genetic analysis has come along, 
how many diseases have we really been able to say this gene or this protein is such a multivariate problem that you start wondering about things about like thought and how it really affects the body and how the genes are expressing themselves and how we can see that if you do a meditative technique and elicit a relaxation response that's turning on different genes and metabolism or um, immune function and all these different things are turning on. You are exactly yeah. now in what is the core of the medicine for the next decennia. We have to make a choice, okay? Yeah. Uh, the, we are teaching quantum university, of course, quantum physics, new biology with uh, Bruce Lipton. Yeah. You know, where, where the main statement is to say, you're not determined by your genes. And what determines yeah. your genes is how you think, you know, your environment, your emotion, yes. you know, this field of information around you. So what this means, it means that at the end of the day, you are master of your health destiny mm -hmm. in the old system. And this, that will cost a lot if we still to think this way. Yeah. It's like, you know, here you have your genes blueprint. Yeah. And, and in, ten, <laughs> when, in 20 years, you will have this disease, you will have this disease. Can you imagine the cost that, will, that can generate? Because everybody will go, you know, as we have seen a few years ago, you know, I will not say any name, but this famous actress, you know, going to surgery because uh, now she was in, in fear to have a breast cancer and mm -hmm. so on. So this way of thinking, and let's realize, you know, what is the cost, the way we think, and the way we teach our doctors, in not only doctor, but even natural medicine doctor in university. You know, because this is at the end of the day, what who, the one who pay the bill, you know, uh, get, you know, it's like <coughs> the way you think, the, the foundation of the curriculum has consequence later on, you know, on these effects. And, and just thinking about genetics, you know, it's, it's, it's dramatic. If we yeah. go in the route where we determine by the gene, we, there is nothing we can do. We have an army of doctors that is just establishing the disease that most of the time we just have symptomatic treatment for. Yeah. We are uh, in a doom, <laughs> going into a doom route. If the other way you start to train doctors that are more, let's say, oriented to this poor consciousness medicine where they see the client in, in terms of potentiality, yeah. now we have <coughs> totally a different outcome at the end. Well, I love that the vision is empowering the, the client or the patient. That's just so, so awesome. And I love the work that you guys are doing here in terms of really being brave, in terms of bringing in this idea and standing not even necessarily standing up to the medical community, but say, hey, there's another aspect of this. We need to consider this. And this is bringing in integrative medicine. And I, I know that I um, had said earlier that I've been seeing that more and more in my practice, uh, especially with the military, bringing in different alternative treatments. Because when it comes to things like PTSD or traumatic brain injury or these other uh, chronic ailments, they don't have a very good, you can't just automatically do surgery for someone or you can't give them a specific medication. Mm -hmm. These wraparound integrative treatments are what is really showing to get people better. And you guys, I think, are just, you know, thinking outside of the box and really like, you know, very intently thinking about what is the most effective strategy and how we can, we can bring that to the, the client. And you guys are very like client focused. I noticed too. You really care about the patients. Yeah, we care, and uh, I like to say you can see uh, people come from all, everywhere. Yeah. So this, uh, I would say, hunger for this kind of knowledge is from everywhere. Yeah. And it's also from medicine because, as you said, we're not. Uh, uh, what we promote is to integrate this to the model of, of healthcare. Actually, it's not to. A and the demand is there. No, yeah, the question is you know, where we get that information and how we get trained and how we, 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 we introduce in, in our healthcare system this, uh, this type of pro-consciousness doc doctor. And this is what we have designed with Quantum University. We yeah. have designed kind of a curriculum that gives this kind of broader understanding. And then at the end of the day, they can also practice modality like bio neuro feedback yeah. and implement this, uh, this uh, technology. It's nice to see the technology catching up to it too, because I think that the more we learn about epigenetics, um, brain scan technology, neural feedback, it really gives a lot of credit to what people have been talking about for a long time in terms of integrative medicine uh, treatment strategies. Yeah, you have pointed this in your conference. That's very yeah. important. You know this. Y you give me kind of a, a, a taste of what would be the future because <laughs> you know it's just, because what we 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 speaking today is just it's just the just the, the beginning. They're just the first sparkle, right? Yeah. Because this 
for, first of all, the smartphone would just get more powerful, and these headbands, you know, mm -hmm. tracking uh, uh, brain waves will uh, refine, and then we will uh, add, uh, as it goes, much more uh, possibility to this technology. The future is bright, Dr. Paul. Thank yeah. you so much for interviewing with Thank me, and it's been a great yeah. week here. Thank you to be here. You all know, right. you're doctors like you are really <laughs> big hope for Thank this you, healthcare. Sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, if you guys have any questions for Dr. Paul, just leave comments below. Um, you know, we'll do our best to answer them. And thanks so much. Tune in next time. Uh, we'll have episodes coming up soon. Thanks. Thank you.